let me talk about some question and answer for NFLEX board. Here we are going to overview some question and answer for maternal newborn nursing. So the first question here, a client at 30 weeks gestation is hospitalized for preeclampsia. Which assessment findings require the priorities of nursing? So this question talking about the complication of pregnancy. The common complication of pregnancy, sometimes it is called pregnancy-induced hypertension. If the pregnancy-induced hypertension not treated or untreated, it lead to maternal hypertension or lead to the complication like eclampsia or preeclampsia. Hmm? The preeclampsia patient have most common sign are hypertension or patient develop edema or proteinuria. But when patient have a sign and symptom of preeclampsia with involuntary movement of muscle, we call seizure, that is eclampsia, right? And patient has a convulsion as well. So this patient, 30 weeks of gestation, hospitalized because of preeclampsia. So we should give them treatment to stop the preeclampsia. Otherwise, preeclampsia lead to formation eclampsia. So which assessment finding require the priority of intervention? Which assessment? First of all, elevated liver enzyme. So liver enzyme elevated, it is important. Hmm? Some of the problem patient develop or complication patient develop, we called H-E-L-L-P, HELP syndrome. In case of HELP syndrome, patient develop elevated liver enzyme. It is important, but let me read what are those. The lower abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding. So we know when patient are pregnant, they must be amenorrheic, no menstruation, no bleeding. But if patient have suddenly bleeding and lower abdomen, it might be the complication of pregnancy. Most common, placenta previa or abruptio placenti, anyone. Soiling the hand, feet and face, it indicates the ediva. But our question required the priorities of intervention. So what next? The urine output is 25 ml per hour. So here the four option. All of four is important, but what are the most important or what are the most priorities? Most priorities is a lower abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. So we have to evaluate what are the cause of bleeding? Is it the premature rupture of the membrane? Or is it placenta previa? Is it, is it uh, placenta abruptio? Right? So always the danger sign, we have to find it out. And vaginal bleeding or abdominal pain is one of the danger signs. 
other danger sign may be visual disturbance or change in the fetal movement after quickening or absence of fetal movement or very painful or burning sensation, urination or elevated the body temperature more than 101 or persistent vomiting after the first trimester. This is a danger sign. And you, we, you need to check first. So priority of intervention, it is abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. So in here, they explain two major important cause of sudden vaginal bleeding or two important cause of complication of pregnancy. One is placenta previa, other is abrapsio placenti. Here, two picture we can see. This is the normal um, pregnant uterus. This is the placenta, but a little bit hemodysis occur. So hemodysis occur. So it is both of them are abnormal, we call abrapsio placenti. So this is the hemorrhage or blood clot formation. If it is untreated, this hemorrhage is increased and blood is passing through the bath canal and blood go out, right? And in that scenario, especially abrapsio placenti, you see the visible bleeding occur. So premature separation of placenta from uterine wall. This is the uterus wall, this is the placenta. Because of abruptio placenta, the placenta is separated from uterus, but they're not ready to delivery. Baby is not mature. And also in that case, painful, dark red vaginal bleeding occur. Painful and dark red. In, if you compare with placenta previa, in case of placenta previa, it is placenta previa is a painless vaginal bleeding. And blood is bright red because placenta previa, placenta is supposed to be up there, close to the cervix. So blood is come out bright. In case of placenta abruptio or abruptio placenta, blood is come little bit far. So this blood is dark and painful, vaginal, bleeding. So the risk factor related to abruptio placenti are pregnancy induced hypertension or multiparity or different kind of trauma. It is very important to treat the uh, patient if they have this problem, right? So first of all, um, I want to read what they said here. So they said the placenta abruption is a possible complication of preeclampsia. So this placenta abruption or abruptio placenta, the complication of preeclampsia that can be life threatening to mother and baby. It occurs when the placenta tear away from the wall of uterus due to stress or causing significant bleeding to the mother and deprive the baby of oxygen. 
to that. Bleeding can conceal inside the uterus and this may require immediate delivery of the baby. Hmm? So keep in mind the placenta previa is the premature separation of placenta from the uterus. And usually in the third trimester and significant risks of maternal or fetal morbidity or mortality. And the major sign symptom intense uterine pain and dark red vaginal bleeding. Only one sign. So it is very important. Uh, we have to know what are the nursing care in case of abruptio placenti or placenta abruption. So what are the nursing care? We administer IV fluid because blood loss. Also we give them blood product and give them oxygen as prescribed. Some doctor give them admi uh, corticosteroid to promote the fetal lung maturities. What others? The option one said elevated liver enzyme can indicate the uh, start of more serious condition we called HELP syndrome, H-E-L-L-P. H stand for hemolysis, blood vessel breakdown. E stand for elevated, L stand for liver, elevated liver enzyme. And L, second L stand for lower, E stand for platelet. Platelet go down, so bleeding occur. So when a patient have hemolysis of red blood cell, elevated liver enzyme and low platelet count, we called HELP syndrome together, right? If you not treated the HELP syndrome, it lead to DIC. DIC stand for disseminated intravascular coagulation or it stand for bleeding. Hmm? Very danger for mother and fetus. So next here about the urine output. In this question, number four said urine output is 25, right? Let me show you again. The urine output is 25 ml per hour. As a student, for NCLEX exam, every student must know what are the normal urine output. The normal urine output is 30 ml per hour. How much 24 hour? 30 multiplied 24. So any, any, anything less represent a potential problem. Oligouria and elevated creatine level into the kidney failure and require intervention. The client urine output 25 ml per hour does not represent an immediate care or life threatening condition. What is their educational objectives? Preeclampsia in pregnancy manifest with high blood pressure and protein in the urine. And edema is expected. So let me recap it. If our patient has a preeclampsia, which we found three signs hypertension, weight gain, or edema develop, and also proteinuria. If the patient has a sign symptom of preeclampsia with convulsion or seizure, we call 
preeclampsia. Both of the cases, we can give them magnesium sulfate or max sulf. After give them max sulf, we have to check for magnesium toxicity. So they said edema expected, although it is not the part of criteria. Complication of preeclampsia include develop eclampsia, placenta abruption, or develop health syndrome. What are the next question? The question here, which findings is the most important for the nurse to report to the healthcare provider? There are four patients, right? Four clients who is most dangerous. We have to go first or we have to notify healthcare provider for emergencies. Four patient we said. The first one, 24 weeks gestation and hemoglobin is nine gram per day. So 24 weeks of pregnancy, but the hemoglobin level is less than normal. So if we do not correct this patient, it can cause a big trouble next, right? So because uh, during the pregnancy, because of inadequate uh, iron, patient develop most common problem, iron deficiency anemia during pregnancies, right? It is important. So when you see the hemoglobin level is, less than nine gram indicate they have a anemia and most common iron deficiency anemia. And anemia easily patient get tired and fatigue and anemia even lead to develop heart failure if untreated. Patient number two, 24 weeks gestation and one hour 50 gram oral glucose and after we testing, we see 120 milligram per DL. So glucose tolerant test. In this glucose tolerant test, the 120 is not that much, right? It is almost normal. So basically, during the gestational phase, or if I say gestational diabetic, basically impaired glucose tolerance during pregnancy. So 24 weeks gestation or glucose tolerance test, 120 milligram per day. Normal blood glucose 70 to 110 after the glucose tolerance test. So it is not that much, right? Almost normal. Basically, if the patient blood sugar level is not controlled during the pregnancy, usually mother go under the rigs. Rigs for what? For miscarriage, infection, or preterm rupture of the membrane, or preterm labor, sometimes develop big head baby, we call macrosomia, macrosomia, or patient develop hyperglycemia, or increase the risk of develop diabetic following the pregnancies. Patient number three, 27 weeks gestation and vaginal uh, secretion is pH is five. So the vaginal secretion is five, it is acidic pH and it is normal, nothing abnormal. Number four patient, 36 weeks gestation, white blood cell count is 13,000. 
normal white blood cell count is four to eleven thousand per cubic millimeter blood. It is little bit high, not too much. So compare all of the four patients or client, we see number one is danger because they have anemia. Anemia, anemia can lead to develop heart failure. So we have to notify to the healthcare provider, right? So what they wrote about anemia for this patient. So they wrote here, iron deficiency anemia is a common complication during the pregnancy and it is related to low iron store and low iron in the food. During the pregnancy, clients are considered anemic when hemoglobin level less than 11 gram per DL. Hmm. And this amount is the first or last trimester. But in second trimester, if it is less than 10.5 gram per DL in the second trimester, we can say they're anemic. A pregnant client with hemoglobin level of nine gram per DL should be evaluated for symptom of anemia and sign symptom of anemia, they easily get tired, fatigue, weakness, or may require additional laboratory work like serum creatinine level to determine the cause. The iron supplement may need to prescribe. So inadequate iron store or insufficient intake of iron or iron rich food can cause iron deficiency anemia. If the patient have anemic, they easily developed fatigue, pallor, shortness of breath, or low hemoglobin and hematocrit level. So if our patient have anemia, the nursing intervention or nursing care is important. We encouraging in, increase the intake of iron rich food like meat, green leafy vegetables, fruits and beans. If patient have anemia, what are the medication basically we give? We give them ferrous sulfate or tell them take the ferrous sulfate with empty stomach and vitamin C increase the absorption of iron. Also increase the fluid and fiber intake to prevent the constipation. Important to know for board exam. What are the other education objectives? The client are diagnosed with anemia when hemoglobin less than 11 in the first trimester or third trimester. In the second trimester, it is less than 10.5, we called anemic. And iron deficiency anemia is the most common cause of anemia. A client is at 20 weeks gestation and the client report having to run to the bathroom all the time. And it hurt to pee and my urine smell bad. Which statement by the nurse is the most appropriate? So this patient complained two key points. One is the run of the bathroom all the time. And also said bad smell. Which statement of the nurse the most appropriate for 
this question by the us. So there are four options, right? Which one is the most appropriate? There are four patient. So first one, dark, uh, first patient said, uh, patient said that dark can be reduced to relieve the symptom and make sure the cleaning from front to back after body. And also the most women have urinary frequency at the stage and it is normal. And you may need to be checked for urinary tract infection. So definitely there are four options, which one the most appropriate for the patient who have increased the frequency, also smell bad urine. It indicate they have a urinary tract infection. If your patient have urinary tract infection, as a healthcare provider, the most appropriate response, you may need to check for urinary tract infection. So drink can be reduced. It is okay, it can help to cure the urinary tract infection, but it is not professional. Make sure, yes, you can tell them how to maintain the personal hygiene. Also, it is not 100% curable treatment. Most women have urinary frequency during the pregnancy, it is true, but not if smell bad. And smell bad indicate they have a bacteria formation and it leads to urinary tract infection. In this picture, we can see the clinical feature of urinary tract infection. And you see, this is the kidney, focus of infection, pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra. Basically, the bacteria get in through the urethra and then implemented or the replication of the growth inside the urinary bladder and bladder is inflamed and bacteria grow in urine and in blood we call bacteriuria or pyuria because bacteria formation the pus and in this clinical condition we called cystitis when patient have cystitis we patient have complaint of burning in urine frequency urgency suprapubic discomfort or hematuria if the cystitis is untreated the bacteria go from urinary bladder to the ureter and get in the kidney and we call retrograde direction when the bacteria in the bladder we call cystitis when bacteria in the urinary tract we call urinary tract infection when bacteria inside the kidney we call pyelonephritis or nephritis when patient have pyelonephritis patient develop nausea and vomiting fever and chill plant pain and also costovertebral tenderness so if you ask me what are the risk factor patient develop uti during pregnancies so postpartum hypotonic bladder one of the important cause of pregnancy after the delivery also during the delivery passing the urinary catheter it is the source of infection 
or frequent pelvic examination or cesarean section source of infection. The person who developed the urinary tract infection or UTI, they complain the urinary urgency, right? They need to go immediately in the toilet for pee. Increase the frequency, increase the times to go. Patient have a low abdominal pain. They have a fever, chill, malaise or cloudy or malodorous urine. Means urine with bad smell. Suprapubic pain is most common sign. And if you check the urine, we can found positive for bacteria. We see WBC present in urine or RBC present. It is important to care of the patient who have the UTI. So nursing care is important. Let me read it first. The most common bacterial infection during the pregnancy is a urinary tract infection. The pregnant women are predisposed to UTI due to physiological change. We call urine stasis in the renal system. Symptoms include frequency, dysuria, urgency, focal smell in urine, sediment, pus or blood in urine or sensation of bladder fullness. The diagnosis is made on sign and symptom and also diagnosis made on urine analysis. The prescribed antibiotic course must be complete to treat the infection approximately. The priority is to deal with the current infection. If UTI is untreated, the infection can lead to pyelonephritis or premature level. But here I want to give a focus on nursing care. What are the nursing care if my patient have UTI developed? Hmm? First of all, we obtain the urine specimen and give them antibiotic after urine culture and provide the education. Education for what? Personal hygiene, how to clean, front to back. Also increase fluid intake at least three liter per day and also Tell them drink can be results. What are the education objectives? The signs symptom of UTI in pregnancy include new onset of this urea and also the sediment or cloudy foul smelling urine. This differentiated it from common urinary frequency throughout the pregnancy. The priority for the nurse is to identify the need for urinalysis and to provide instruction to finish the course of antibiotic to prevent the untreated infection from causing the pyelonephritis or premature level. What next? Question here, at 37 weeks pregnant women comes to the emergency department with a fractured ankle. Which assessment finding the most concern and require nurse to follow up? Need to evaluate out of four. 
So first of all, here, the fetal heart rate remained 206 per minute. So fetus has a trachycardia. So if the trachycardia is persist, we need to evaluate. It is very important. Fetal heart rate and fetal movement indicate your baby is healthy or not. Fetal kicked four times in past hour. So it is normal kick count, right? Four times past hour. Mother report feeling two contraction every hour and it's called Bexton Hicks kick, I mean contraction. And this is also the normal, right? And here we said it is a movement report two kicks and is the irregular or painless contraction throughout the pregnancy and it is normal sign we called Braxton Hicks contraction, right? Now here, mother hemoglobin 11.0 gram per day. So 11.0 gram during pregnancy is okay. We call physiological anemia, nothing abnormal. What is their explanation? Let me read. They said the fetal trachycardia is a baseline for more than 100 bit per minute for more than if the stay during or more than 10 minutes. We call trachycardia. We have to figure out what are the underlying cause of trachycardia. Trachycardia needs to evaluate and continue supervision. The most sensitive indicator for the fetal heart health are fetal movement and fetal heart rate. So this said, monitor the fetal movement or kick count is primary method of fetal surveillance. In general, four movement per hour or 10 district fetal movement within two hours are normal findings. And Braxton Hicks contraction felt mid-pregnancy onward. And some books say it is irregular, painless contraction throughout the pregnancy. During the pregnancy, hemoglobin can drop 11 point gram in this condition known as physiological anemia because of pregnancy. What are the education objectives? Sustained fetal trachycardia means heart rate more than 160 bit per minute and more for more than 10 minute duration. It is indicate trachycardia is a concerned finding that require further evaluate or follow up. So this is answer number one here.